Hi, everybody out there is so confused by the National Association of Realtors and Rules and I get asked questions all the time about it and how are we going to do business moving forward. First of all, I would like to tell you, I don't know if you know that or not, that the National Association of Realtors is the U.S. largest trade association and the real estate business represents one-fifth of the U.S. economy. This is huge. That's why we always have changes in our business. We always have new forms coming up. And um, there's a lot of negative news in the media all the time around it. I don't understand why, but I guess uh, negative news sells. Whether we like it or not, it's the media. It's normal. We have uh, negative news all the time. I don't like listening to the news, but we have to, so we are informed. Anyway, so uh, out of this settlement, there are three changes that happened. The first change is uh, the buyer representation agreement. Uh, and then the second change is the different ways the buyer's agent compensation fee. How is this going to get paid? And the third change is the buyer's compensation fee and the MLS. So the first change is the buyer's representation agreement. We always had this form. We just didn't have to have it signed by the buyer. Now, moving forward, it is a requirement. The buyers have to sign a buyer representation agreement with their agent, and this uh, form uh, formalizes the representation and the uh, relationship between the buyer and the buyer's agent and how the buyer's agent will be compensated. The second uh, thing is uh, the different ways how the buyer's agent gets paid. Before I talk about this, I would like to talk about the three different agreements that we have in real estate that govern the real estate transaction. The first agreement is the listing agreement, and this is between the seller, the homeowner, and the listing agent. And this agreement uh, goes in details about the relationship between the seller and the listing agent, the price of the house. Uh, there is a fiduciary duty from the listing agent towards their client, the seller, they have to protect their best interest. They have to negotiate the best sale price and best terms for the seller. And also it goes over how the house will be marketed and exposed to the public to generate the highest possible price for the seller. So this is the first type of agreement. The second type of agreement is the buyer representation agreement, which we just talked about again. Before, it was not a requirement that we have it signed. Now it is a requirement. It has to be signed by the buyer before their agent can show them any houses. And again, there is a fiduciary duty from the buyer's agent towards their client, the buyer. They have to protect their best interest. They have to negotiate the best price and terms. And they have to show them the houses in the neighborhoods that they want. When they're ready to write an offer in house, they have to show them comps and educate them on how much they should offer to get to win that house. Um, this is the second agreement. The third agreement is the RPA, and this is the residential purchase agreement. And this is between the seller and the buyer. It's literally the offer from the buyer to the seller. And in the offer, of course, we have the price and the terms, uh, the contingencies and the conditions, when are they gonna be due, and uh, now, in the residential purchase agreement, the buyer's agent um, compensation fee will be negotiated. So now we talked about the three different types of agreements that govern the real estate transaction. And now that takes me to how the buyer's agent is going to be compensated. And there are four different ways. The first option is the seller can still pay uh, the buyer's agent compensation fee. The second option, the buyers themselves can pay their buyer's agent compensation fee. The third option is a hybrid situation and that can be the seller and the buyer pay the buyer's compensation fee. And the fourth option, it could be a concession from the seller to pay the buyer's agent compensation fee. I'll explain more on this. So let's say the house price is 900000 What the buyer's agent can do is they can build up their compensation fee into the price. So they will offer, for example, 930000 to the seller and ask for the 30000 to be concessions paid 
to pay the virus agent fees. So I went over the three different types of contracts, three different types of agreements, listing agreements between the seller and the listing agent, buyer representation agreement between the buyer and the buyer's agent, and the RPA, the residential purchase agreement, and this is between the buyer and the seller. And in this last one, which is uh, the offer, is where the buyer's agent compensation fee is negotiated. And then I talked about the four different ways the buyer's compensation fee can be paid. The third change is we used to advertise the compensation fee, the buyer's agent compensation fee on the multiple listing services. We are no longer allowed to do this. This field is actually taken away from the multiple listing services. We cannot advertise the compensation fee to the buyer's agent on the multiple listing services. We can advertise it in open houses, um, on flyers, but not in the multiple listing services. Now, I'm going to talk about some questions I get asked uh, into this regard. The first question is, do I have as a buyer to sign a representation uh, agreement with my buyer's agent? Yes. Uh, now, uh, moving forward, as of August 17th, uh, this agreement has to be signed before the buyer's agent can show you houses. Number, question number two, is the buyer's agent fee fixed? No, it is not. It is negotiable between the buyer's agent and the buyer and between the buyer's agent and the seller. Third question, do I have to pay my buyer's agent? The answer to this is no, but you are working with a reputable, experienced, knowledgeable realtor that know the neighborhoods that you like. He will show you houses in the areas that you like. And then when you're ready to write an offer, they are going to pull up comps to the house that you want to buy and show you where the price should be because sometimes houses are underpriced to generate multiple offers or overpriced. So you want to work with a realtor that knows the area and the neighborhood. And when they pull up comps, they can show you whether this house is overpriced so you can offer less or if it's underpriced. And if you want the house, you would want to offer more, of course, to match what the comps show you, right? Then after that, when you get in contract with the seller uh, and you start looking at the inspection reports, your buyer's agent is going to review those reports with you and they are going to point out any alarming issues that they see in the reports. And then you can start negotiating with the seller repairs or uh, credit back. So um, with all this work, the buyer's agent will require some type of compensation, of course, because nobody works for free, right? So the fourth question is, uh, who takes the risk? I got some client of mine asked me, who takes the risk? There is no risk at all. All it is, it's a new way of doing business. It's new forms for us to fill and have them signed by our clients. And before we have our clients sign any forms, we do explain everything to them in details. And when I write those terms in the offers uh, or in the agreements that we sign with our clients, I explain everything before they sign it, then I send it for signatures. Now, I'll summarize everything that I talked about. Number one is the buyer representation agreement. And we always had this form. Now it is a requirement that it's signed by the buyer before their buyer's agent can work with them. Number two, I talked about the three different agreements that we have, the listing agreement, the buyer representation agreement, and the RPA, which is the residential purchase agreement. Those three agreements are the agreements that cover the real estate transactions, the different ways the buyer's agent compensation fee, how is this gonna get paid, the buyer's compensation fee, and the MLS. And then I address the questions that I get asked by my clients and the people that I meet. I hope this made things more clear about the new rules from the National Association of Realtors and the DOJ Department of Justice. Uh, moving forward, I'm sure there'll be more questions that will come up. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And it's just a new way of doing business moving forward more forms to fill, and we'll definitely explain everything in those forms before 
uh, you have to sign them. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. My name is Heather Ayan. I'm a realtor with Coleman Banker in Danville in the East Bay. Thank you so much and you have a great day. Bye.